think we're okay now. Okay, we're good? Yep. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Support. Sure. Okay. All in favor? Uh, All right. Thank you. And the agenda. I need a motion to approve the agenda as printed. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Support. Okay. Any discussion on the request to change voting items for the chair? Was there a specific oh. item that he wanted to weigh in on? I think it was the appropriations budget. And that's pretty much Do it. Do we want to and just move we slide the that financial to the end since he's on the financial committee? Yeah. That would make sense. Then we can just proceed with it. Okay. Sure. Do we need to make a motion then? No, it's just a friendly. We can make a friendly adjustment to your motion to move financial to the end of new business or however that works. It's not what it needs to, but yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And you're good with that, supporter? Mm -hmm. Here we get that change. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Public comment? Anybody online? We just got staff for staff updates. Mr. Scott. Very good. All right. Staff and partner agency updates. Those are in their packets typically and do how do I know if anybody wants to and then everyone early? can just give like a two sentence something that they accomplished that they're excited about this month okay um I got it okay so speed dating staff reports exactly that's exactly the vibe Muriel's first but she's eating you still want to go first yeah I can go first um, <laughs> all of our strength technicians as of yesterday have passed all of their pesticide tests so um, they're good to be certified and Will has been out in the field training them so um, yeah that's one more thing to worry about yay cool um, this is finally our field season, so we've been out doing a lot of residue checks with the children. The corn's getting way, growing a lot faster than we anticipated, so we finished up quick. <laughs> like, that's our race. Um, I noticed that when I was driving by some cornfields, I'm like, it seems like the corn is really hard this year. You got a jump start this year. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. She's our program highlight, so if Oh, you want to just have her give her a yeah. Oh, okay. Ben, you want to go? Yeah, uh, just finished up quarterly reporting for my two big grants and had our quarterly meeting a couple weeks ago. Um, and then I guess the big highlight would be that you know, obviously, we actually got the uh, money in from the county for our monitoring, and we're kind of lining up some purchases for equipment. Uh, including um, SANS, the monitoring buoy for the Mac, uh, backpack shocking units, all that good stuff. So we'll start to actually uh, buy stuff, and then we're preparing all the quality assurance plans for those uh, projects as well. So, yeah, a lot on that front. Okay. Um, for me, I did a conservation on tap, which you went to, with um, a student from GBSU, and uh, it was kind of, a, she was looking for internship hours, and so, and she specifically wanted to do something about the groundwater issues in Ottawa County, so we did a little bit of an outreach, kind of, we did some social media stuff, we did the presentation, we did a survey on, um, we sent it to, it was like a residential survey that we sent to, um, the Allendale Informed, one of the Allendale Informed Facebook pages. And we got a lot of interesting feedback, like good feedback of people sharing like what they've been experiencing with their water issues and how their um how the groundwater shortages are affecting them. So it was interesting and interesting to see like we asked some questions like if you aren't, you know, related to native plants and stuff, you know, if you aren't using, if you aren't you already utilizing native plants in your landscaping, like why is that? A number of people said financial reasons, HOA, different stuff like that. So it gives us ideas as to like what are some things we should be doing to try and get people to do those things so it was cool she was really good and the presentation was good at the conservation on tap and yeah so it was a fun little project internship project with her awesome mm -hmm. um alex the only one left to go mm -hmm. right yeah alex yeah so uh this month we've been uh 
getting our new acting DC up to speed. So getting projects kind of reevaluated and shared. And they've also been working on, uh, I've been working on a lot of landowner payments. So getting residue tillage payments wrapped up and money in farmer's bank accounts. So it's primarily been our focus. And uh, at the moment we've got, I think four landowners are interested in irrigation uniformity and it's just a matter of uh, coordinating not only busy schedules with farming, but uh, dancing around the weather too, because you can't seem to get two days in a row without rain right now. So once that happens, we'll be getting some testing done as well. Cool. Thank you. Natalie? Yeah. Um, so this last month, um, has been very busy. I spoke with our auditor and um, she gave us some advice on ways that we need to improve. So I've started overhauling our filing system and how we track um, some of the actual physical paper things like reimbursements. And my drawers are really pretty and I'm really proud of them. <laughs> uh, she is also going to be coming July 16th. Um, to go through closing out the end of the year books from last year, um, as well as we have, we've made since we talked to her a very long list of questions that we have for her um, in regards to, you know, cleaning things up and how we can improve. Um, and she even said, if we can't get it done in a day, she's happy to come down again. So I'm really excited to have that professional support. Um, I have already kind of talked to all of you separately about it, but I began to look into retirement options for the staff. I'm still kind of working on what that will look like. I'm not ready to like bring anything to you, um, but that's something that I've been starting to look into and revisit. I presented to the board of commissioners. Um, and then um, obviously, as you're aware, our trucks had a bit of damage. <laughs> Um, but I have some updates for you on that as well. So they totaled the Ranger, so that white truck out there, and they're going to be giving us like $6,482 for it. Um, the other trucks um, obviously have some damage. The blue one's got some cab damage, and then the black one had a tailgate issue. The last one's fine. Um they have approved, um, the adjuster came out, took photos, they've approved the fixes. We only have a $250 du deductible um, and they will pay for the rest of it. We also on top of that um, can get a rental car for each of the vehicles that was damaged um, for up to $1,030 or 30 days, whichever comes first. Um, so I'm working with her on getting that set up since two trucks is like the minimum that we can possibly have. Um, so we're going to try to get that going pretty quickly here. And then our the tree removal was um, 3200 and they covered all but 500 of it. So um, we'll just have to pay that and we'll be um, squared away on that. Obviously, we're going to need to buy a new vehicle. Um, we needed that fourth vehicle. So um, I know in the past, we have had some cars that we've bought used that have stuck around like a year. Um, and then we've had to sell them because they were unsafe or didn't run. And I'm uninterested in doing that again. Um, I would like to uh, kind of, I've not had the time, but I'm going to look at what's out there. Um, kind of see what the goal amount is and then maybe um, do some fundraising for the difference in what we get from the insurance company versus what we need to have a reliable safe vehicle that won't last us a year and then we'll have to do it again. Um, are there any questions on that? I guess maybe Can I should ask, ask. Where you took your vehicle in to get fixed? Well, the they haven't done anything yet, but we were working with um, Rademacher I think is what it's called. It's okay. like a body shop mm -hmm. in Green Haven. Yeah. Thank you. But we also bought from the Chevy dealership right over there. And if they got our truck in there, we could talk about the vehicle. Yeah, I guess we or could we do that. The same one. Yeah, we I guess we could um do that. I wasn't even though I don't want like a super used vehicle, I was not thinking new necessarily, but I mean Prices whatever the Ford are still sky high. recommends. I mean can yeah. I mean, the new vehicles, they're looking fast. 
Yeah. They got a quota of meat. Mm -hmm. Just saying, sixty four hundred dollars to buy two really nice motorcycles. Yeah. <laughs> I've been wanting to take that class. <laughs> I'm, I'm just that seems up. like an insurance nightmare. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We don't want our insurance. Do you company. know when our other vehicles are done? It's about two more years, right? For the payments? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe a couple years. Yeah. I would have to look. You might want to look at that because then if it all rolls in, we could get a new one. And then you're losing three vehicles. I can look into and it. And then you have one that you're paying. You just got to suffer for two years. <laughs> got to suffer. But you're completely. Because Megan always wanted four, but chicken don't know if you had four. Yeah. Well, it's a new thing we didn't. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of money. And we put, I think, 10 grand on the last two. The first one, I think we put 20, maybe. maybe yeah. Yeah. I will, I'll look into it and I'll, I mean, I'll bring it to you before I do anything. But obviously, I would really like to move on it quickly since we are, we, it's people to them and we need those cars. Let's move on the repairs of the three. Well, look, yeah, I will do that regardless. To move as fast because but I would bring it to you before I bought it. Some sort of a fundraising game plan. Correct. And we have a fundraising committee meeting next Monday, so we were planning on talking about it there, about looking at prices and what we need to raise. Mm -hmm. People do better with the goal. So, mm -hmm. but if you need a vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, you can do that sooner than wait for fundraising money, right? Right, but we can rent in the meantime. Yeah. We have, and fundraising, like when you have a very specific goal, can go pretty fast. Like I could see us raising it in 30 days, no problem. How much? I don't 30, know. 30, yet. 40, 50. You tell people an amount and you let them see that ticker move up. It's amazing how more we We've got some good photos too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> photo. yeah. We specifically did the photo shoots. Okay. It's a sob story. It's a clear goal. Take a Everybody picture of me stuck private. inside the range. You should get toasted too. Nope. Oh. Luckily. <laughs> Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's the update on that. Do you have any other questions? What was the 500 of the tree that fell, that was removed and only 500 of it wasn't paid for? But it was our deductible. It was a deductible too. Okay. Yeah. I thought that. that she said the landlord Sorry. paid. What's I, that? I asked her if the landlord paid it and she said no. So she <laughs> tried that one. Well, I called him and let him know, and he said it was because there was damage to our property. It was under our entrance. Anyway. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. She go in the fire department and tell me we can the, the forest over there and may blow over. Yeah, we all said that, too. Um, moving forward, though, in the next month i'm gonna have to spend a lot of time on um our the wrapping up this year's budget and making sure it's accurate to the end of the um fiscal year as well as building the 2025 budget we also have all of our annual reviews coming up as well as um, updating work agreements to reflect raises that are um, something that the district manage so those are all things that are on my plate for this next month um, and I realized in looking into that, that I'm not providing you with something that I should be, which I think is kind of almost like what we were talking about. But I, I think quarterly, we're supposed to provide the board with um, like the appropriations budget as it lies, and then where each of those line items are, um, you know, to date, maybe the end of that month or previous month or whatever. So quarterly, we should be providing that to the board every every quarter and I didn't know that. So that's something I will bring to the next meeting and try to do moving forward. Where's, this, where's that mandated? With quarter I just, the, MDART sent out a list. Of, they like had, they were asking questions about just in general, how people do financial stuff. And they had like a list of documents you provide to the board. And that out of all of them, that was the one that I was like, oh, I don't do that. I should probably do that. So, actual and it makes sense, right? Like, how are you gonna know if you go over, if you're not regularly showing it to you guys? And um, and that we were already starting to do something like that with our just our operations budget, but it makes sense to do it with the appropriations budget. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, and hopefully once everything's cleaned up and streamlined, it will not be a big ask. <laughs> so we'll see <laughs> how that goes. But that's something I'm going to be working towards as well. Um, with that comes some needs, actually. Um, I will need one of the, I think it's HR that has done this in the past, but a board member to sit in on the HR committee. Um, no, an HR <laughs> committee member to sit in on the annual reviews um, that happened in August. So I don't know who would like to do that, but I will be wanting to schedule those so that everyone can know. Usually, yeah, split them up. Like we do half, I do half or whatever. Based on availability. Mm -hmm. So if you yeah, both want to just send me some times you're available after the board meeting in August, um, I'll get those all coordinated. Just to let me know when you're free. Um, and then I will probably, once we have a campaign idea for the truck for fundraising, I'll probably send it to the board members to put out into their communities um, to try to assist with that. And since we can only go so far with the media that we have available to us. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, I have all of our MDARD reviews coming up this month and next for all of our MDARD grants. And one of those is our ops grant. And I have a couple forms that I need to go over with a board member before that review. Um, it is happening August 22nd. I thought I wrote it down, but I didn't. I'm pretty sure it's August 22nd. Um, and just before then, I need somebody to go over these forms with me. So I don't know how you want to decide that. I did that last year. So if you like, I felt like it was valuable as a new board member to do. Just I'm pretty familiar with them, dark grants. So um, I'm happy to do that. I would love that. Um, I have, I, okay, I'll, we'll set up a time. I'll put it on my list to bug you about it and we'll set up a time. And again, and I hate to be a pain in the butt, but okay. as much as early morning or end of the day, so you got to avoid taking vacation time as much as possible. I'm, I'm happy to do it, but I take vacation time to work the elections. Absolutely. And I hear you on that one. I, okay. yeah. I still want to like vacation something. No, I understand <laughs> completely. Um, and if you can't find a time that works, like I will step in and do it again, but okay. No problem. But I don't want to, you know, bend your schedule either. You know, if you're willing to like just flex shifting one way or other with your hours. I have no problem. We have to flex our hours a lot yeah. anyway. So I have no problem doing that. Um those were all my needs. And that is my report for today. If you don't have any questions. I have an auditor question. You said yeah. close the books on July 16th. Is that what you said? We're not closing them. She wants to make sure that our closing out the last fiscal year is correct so that we can just focus on making sure everything from October 1st on is clean. Okay. She just wanted to go over closing out a year with us. Yeah, review it. So are you still on an every other year? Full audit, mm -hmm. for and we one year did our audit every other year. Okay. Every other year, and we we did our audit and got a, our last um, year. Yeah. Okay. On I guess I just wonder why, is it, why why we're looking at last year now in July versus was just because he was busy was doing other audits and stuff. Yeah, this was when oh, okay. we scheduled a time to meet with her. Okay, so mm -hmm. there's no. All right, I'm just curious. And I think I had planned on meeting with her, and then I forgot about it, and you brought it up, and so that I prompted me to remember to schedule mm -hmm. the stinking meeting. So <laughs> to be honest, I think that's what actually happened. I think we probably subconsciously try to forget about things that involve auditors generally. Probably. Speaking, so I don't blame either. But I'm excited. I think it will be really helpful and beneficial. I'm, I think it'll be good. Yeah. Well, good for you for being excited about me. Though, about <laughs> That's it. Well, thank you. Anything yeah. else for Natalie? Morgan showed up. Morgan, do you have your, your speed dating partner staff report thing you want to do? Now that oh, here? I was like, speed dating? <laughs> <laughs> what are we call this? Hot what what call it hot or something? <laughs> hot, seat. hot what? Um, hot seat. Um, the okay. composting workshop went well. It didn't rain, so it rained on my way home, though. Mm -hmm. Well received. But, good questions. Yeah, good combos, and there was good representation. Um, one of the composting guys asked, like, who here is like a home scale gardener, school garden, and then who here is a farmer, and it was like half and half. Oh, so, nice. Good. That's good. That's mm -hmm. great. So, yeah, that's my highlight, I guess, this month. Now, like, on to the next thing. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so are we ready for Karen then? 
Um, Can we just share the need this one? <laughs> That's something I was going to mention. Um, well, how much time do I have? Well, Matt's not here, so. Yes, but it's usually five to ten minutes. We're here to Matt's learn okay. about what you've got going on. Okay. I think first, I'm going to just quickly go through my goals spreadsheet. So I have a goals spreadsheet that I do. I set yearly goals, and then I have been doing quarterly reporting. Um, this is a, kind of a newer system that I'm dart in my grant. Do you want to connect to the TV or no? You don't have to. You can, so they can see your um, spreadsheet. That my grant coordinator has. Is there any, since this is being recorded and is live, is there any confidential information on that? that no. Don't want to no. Just no place. And I'm not going to, I won't <laughs> share the screen. I'll just is it just here. HDMI or? It's a, uh, you I have to go to, display. you have to go to display, go to Bluetooth. And I'll just move it. And then it's um yeah, show it, yeah. That's a big laptop. Uh, it is large. <laughs> you have to go to that Bluetooth and other devices. And then like usually you have to disconnect because you need to walk around the airport. Or you try to connect it. Or you have to move it. And then reconnect to it on your wireless docks and just kind of should so my Wi-Fi with this computer is not working. So oh, that don't work. All right. Well, don't worry about it. That's okay. If you don't, we try to. I have a ticket and I'm not out for that. Okay. Well, no problem. Okay. So quarterly, we're looking at goals quarter one, two, three, four, um, and then make it just a sum goal of the whole entire year. Um, so I really like the quarterly aspect of of revisiting my goals. Um just to keep myself on track and what I need to like shift my focus on because there's so many moving parts in my job that the first couple of years, I just found it was hard to keep my hands and everything. So goal one, qualifying producer education events. This is a grant requirement. Um, goal was four and today I hit that goal. Thanks to Morgan's workshop and collaborating with Morgan and Joel to make it a phase one event. Um, for me. Um, the goal here is to not meet the goals, but surpass the goals. So I look really good and like I'm doing stuff. <laughs> um, but so that's one of them. And then initial risk assessments would be with new farms. My goal is 16 or my goal was 30 and I'm currently at 16. Um, I think that is the most updated. I have quite a few leads and, and things in the queue so I am confident that I'm going to hit that um repeat risk assessments would be like re-verification so I always I have my re-verifications mapped out and what systems I need to look at for each farm so I'm currently at 13 of 13 um and then risk reduction practices implemented um goal of 40 and I am at 82. Nice. So uh, I guess a small caveat with that would be with this new database and us figuring out what we're considering risk reduction practices. I think things are not being um, recorded. So I think that 82 number is right. Um, because when we talked about it in my last goals meeting, I had that number and they're like, you're, you're going to have way more. So with the new database and getting all the kinks worked out, um, I should have a lot more. So every item that I add to an action plan should be a risk reduction practice. So for a farm that can be two items in an action plan, it can be 15 items in an action plan. And it can be something as simple as writing an emergency plan or giving them a drift management plan or something as complicated as pouring a fuel pad or more record keeping. Um, and then new verifications, I have a goal of 19. I'm currently at six, but I will say I have a handful of farms that are already in the queue. And there's all there's also some that just come like pop up out of nowhere. Um, and then with that also, I and re verifications 18 of 28. So 28 is the goal. So 
with new and revares, I am currently covering Nuego or Muskegon County because there's a vacancy there. And then I'm also covering, I'll say part of Allegan County. I'm only taking on one farm because it is such a monster and they also have some in Ottawa. And so the tech wants to make sure that the most experienced technician in this area is taking that over and that is someone that is experienced will have the understanding of it. Um, I can't say any more on that. <laughs> um, and then with that, I wanted to say that the those coverage areas, I think with this being my fourth summer, so three years on my fourth, um, I think the ask of me covering Muskegon and part of Allegan is just demonstrating my capacity um, as a technician, not that I wanna cover three counties because I definitely do not, but um, also just like the collaboration of the technicians and like the the communication collaboration that we have for helping each other out um, and making sure that our farms are taken care of. Um, so there's that. And I left my notepad over there <laughs> of my points. That's just a little number summary. Um, and then, so referring to the state budget and the fact that the, the MEAT program is going to be kept under district management. Um, I think with all of the buzz and talk about that, I have gotten even more farm visit requests or people following back up with me saying, hey, I want to get this done. I want to get it finished. Um, so I've been pretty busy, not just in Ottawa, but in, in Muskegon as well. Um, and then just with all of the different events going on too. So I think a lot of people are talking about it more. Um, it's kind of front and center more than it was. Um, I guess that's all I have to say on that. And then one thing that I'm looking forward to is cultivating resilience. Um, so we've done, this, this will be, I think we've done four years of cultivating resilience. Each year we learn a lot. Each year we have a debrief, what can we do better, what went well, what did not go well, um, which I take very seriously in providing a quality event for our farmers. Um, so each year we adjust a little more to make it better. So this year we are going to be making it into a winter conference with a follow-up of like a, a mini field series during the summer because we saw through the inclement weather that we had last year, how well the the rotations in the conference setting worked indoors and how it kept everyone together um, and how everyone is very engaged and we kept things short. Um, so we're gonna do a winter conference when it, you can't get outside and look at anything. And then from those topics, we want to um, kind of refer back to with the small summer series where we can get back outside and dig deeper into those topics in like a real world application. Um, so, and then another exciting thing that I've been working on, we've been working on is getting um, a speaker with a big draw. So someone that, that our farmers, our early and middle adopters want to listen to. Um, and that would be Mr. Rick Clark, um, he has his own regenerative ag consulting company. He's very well respected in that area and community. He's an Indiana farmer, um, and he talks a lot from from his transition on, on his own farm. Um, and so we have secured him for our speaker for the event, and I think we're looking at February 6th. Yep, um, February 6th of the for the day. Center. Yep, of 2025. So um, that is another exciting piece of that. And then I think that's about it for my highlights and updates. As always, a lot of moving pieces, but 
each year I feel a little more confident, but then the more you know, the less you know. So, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Questions for Karen? That's it. Um, your goals were those just Ottawa? Did they didn't you do several in front of Stephen? No, or just Ottawa. Ottawa. So, so, your goals, yeah, just Ottawa, just yeah. Ottawa. So, I guess if I get any verifications in other counties, that would just help even more towards my goals, or I don't know. Um, Stephen thinks kind of more, yeah, and I don't know how long that will be. And, mm -hmm with the budget thing and I think they're gonna rearrange some counties and, and nobody knows what that is gonna look like. But as of now, those are my Ottawa goals. Um, but I am the Ottawa technician, whether I'm working in this is my base county. So I would consider those as like I'm doing work um in their neighboring counties. So yeah. And who do you do your goal setting remind me? Yeah. Just yeah. yeah, and then I have um a committee that I invite each year. So I try to have like a variety of like a district conservationist, an RCS, a couple of my farmers that I've worked really well with, and um a board member, and then any technicians or staff members that I'm collaborating with too. So that will be in September, October that I'll be scheduled in my one of those so that was really helpful last year the one that you did mm -hmm. I really did. like so much so. yeah thank you thank you yeah thank you welcome mr chair yeah thank you <laughs> to pass the gavel finish it up i just got started well <laughs> me too <laughs> I just want to say real quick too, props to our district specifically and also MACD for putting together that uh, survey that we all did mm -hmm. and getting that out. I had two people pretty high up in Farm Bureau at MLSA conference tell me that that survey was actually very influential and mm -hmm. they pushed pretty hard back about yep. that old mm -hmm. beef stuff. So yeah. Yeah, that was all of us. So yep, that mattered a lot for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So we did that. Yep. Yay. And it always helps when I'm advocating at the state level that I can brag about my local district for sure, because, you know, like I know other districts do whatever they do, but I can speak with authority about what happens here and that that helps greatly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Moving on then. So human resources um, committee. We are going to give a report out. And I say something since I'm saying all the words that we pick and do the report out. Just sure. 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 Um, so we uh, met this month and continued to work through the policy book. So we've made a goal to revise um, two sections every month. So next month we'll have the first two sections of the procedure and policy guide ready for you guys to review our recommended changes and we'll just proceed um, onward like that. Um, we worked on an updated funeral leave policy, which is in, in this on the policy updates a little bit later on. Um, and sorry, I didn't come with notes prepared to get this report. So am I missing anything? Other than, oh, we went through uh, in more detail. I know we talked about this last month, it was on, we had started the process of going through kind of a flow chart for grants. Um, so we took the information from that meeting, Natalie worked on putting together um, an actual visual for what that would look like. And so we went through that updated version, made some additional recommendations to her for some more changes, and we'll continue to work on revising that grant um, policy and flow chart um, to make really easy decision-making tool for her so she knows what needs to be brought to the board and when and how and all of that kind of stuff. So those are the, the major things that we worked on at the HR committee meeting this month. So thank you. Questions on the committee meeting? So we have a lot of um, forest pest technician work agreements in here. And I don't even pretend to know well and how many i gotcha <laughs> okay so you have three um and i think i mentioned at the end of our meeting because we ran out of time and i know the hr committee should be reviewing those um but so we have three forest pest techs whose annual 
um, review date came up, the CISMA does their annual reviews um, on the calendar date that someone started, whereas the district does their reviews in August. Um, that's just how it was when I started. Um, and so they um, found in their budget that they could provide a dollar raise for each of them. So you'll see that reflected in their, sorry, Matt, in, um, in their wage line, um, as well as on the back, this is like their uh, stipend sheet um, and how much they get for their health care and the 5% health care and retirement, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> And that is for our technicians, Brendan, Sean, and I believe Sierra. Yeah. What is the, can I ask questions? You may. <laughs> what is the, um, I mean, this all comes out of their grant. Yep. They don't do no shell games for, I mean, they're all grant oriented, the raises and everything. Yep. Correct. Stipends and all the. Correct. In fact, the grant that they're spending out of currently, the MISGPHWA grant, is um, going to last longer than expected. Not, we don't extend it or anything, but um, it's just, we thought October, but it's going to look like it's going to be longer. Just that number 500 bucks is out of the district, right? Um, yeah. The committee stipend? Is yes. that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it is yeah. in the appropriations budget and the operations. Yep. Mm -hmm. But so is everyone else's. Right. Mm -hmm. Good question. Any other Do you have questions, Beth? No, I'm good. Any questions? So I'll look for a motion. I make a motion to accept the work agreements. We'll second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, next up is Finance Committee and all things finance. So, Finance Committee report out is our first item. I'm going to do my note. Do you need to uh, do a motion to change it? Didn't you change the agenda ahead of time earlier? Well, we was sent to push it out. But we didn't say exactly to where, so not a out to where Matt Perfect. is. And he's here, so. Yes, I thought about it, but I didn't say it out loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so really out. Technically, technically, we're correct. But... Okay, finance and meeting. We talked about the annual budget. And the races that we're going to get into a little later. Uh, HWA, we got that. Monitoring money and supplies, we're going to talk about that. Auditor retirement bills. We pretty much talked about everything already. We did. So it's just the annual budget. And there's something I noticed that I'd like to make a change to. Before we approve it, I do it. So that's during so discussion gonna... on the approach budget for the current budget year. Is that what you're looking for? That would be for current budget to add, when we're going to add in the Ottawa County money, right? Okay. Yep, that's the proposed appropriation yep. budget. Okay. So there'll be a discussion on that. And, okay, so we're good. We don't mm -hmm. need any. All right. Okay, thank you. So the next item is the bank recs and paying the bills. Can everyone review those? I don't have any questions. Is there anything to add? I only have one thing to say about it. Um, first of all, I was looking at the balance sheet when it's all spread out like this, because usually we provide it like very condensed. And it looks like it has potential to be a good um, close the door funds sheet someday. Anyway, that's beside the point. I wanted to note that um, we talked about including this moving forward. Um, we sold 1.5 acres of um, native seed for um, for Pheasants Forever um, this last month. And then the only other thing is that you'll note in, the, in this sheet um, for your bills to be paid, 
um, there is an addition that was not in your email. That's something that I got today. Um, it's something that I didn't have time to print the check. So the check's not gonna be signed today, but it's something we have to pay before the next meeting. So I wanted you to be aware of it. It is backpack shoppers for that water um, quality monitoring um, funding stream. If you guys approve the appropriations budget, that is. It's in the budget. It just is a supply item that is being added. First purchase. Okay, how's how strict are we going to be? Are we going to um, make a motion to approve and pay the bills contingent on um, approving the appropriation budget? I guess I didn't. Or so, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, I don't think we need to be that fussy. But. I'll make a motion to pay the bills. Support. In favor? Aye. Aye. Close the door fund. I feel like that needs a new name, but close the door fund. That one I don't have for you. Um, I should have deleted it probably, but that's that's kind of the thing that I've been working on is like an advanced document slash close the door funds where we can look at our bank account and know what is restricted for an advanced versus um, what is a just district funds. Um, and if we reimburse everything today, how much money will we have? That's a document Annalise and I are working on, um, and we have some questions for the auditor on, we've gotten stuck on how to move forward um, with it. So it's something I don't, I don't have a really good example of right now because we're trying to fix it. I think um, that's good. That's a, that was a hard one. It is a hard one. Um, but I have your cash flow document, which is that next one. Sorry, Becky, not to jump. No, that's fine. Um, without you, but. That's perfect. But the cash flow um, document is looking very pretty now that we got uh, our water quality monitoring money. Um, I don't really have anything super of note to say other than you'll notice the uncolored things um, in the week after the 15th of July, if you look at the top, those are all the quarterly uh, Estimates that we submitted July 1st, those have um, been updated in the sheet that I have today, but at the time of this, it was not updated. Um, but those have all been submitted for quarterly reporting and we expect those hopefully on time. They've been all approved by MDARD on, on my end. I don't know where you want me to mention it. There's a couple of things that need to be changed on this sheet. Can you just note it on there yep, for me? Thank you, I appreciate you. That's all I had to say. Well, you should say how we split the account. Oh yeah, well, for the water quality monitoring money, we talked about um, taking the, since we have that third bank account now, we talked about putting that in that third savings account that doesn't really have much outside of the $2,000 in it. Um, just so that we can keep it separate. And while we're working on that cash flow advanced document, since it's not great yet, um, that way one thing can at least not get messy. Um, though theoretically, um, our QuickBooks should keep it clean. Uh, but we're going to move that into that third account so that we can just, as we spend out of it, transfer out of that account versus the whole account. It'll be monitored. I'm going to say a lot more strictly. I should put it that way and not so long. So it's one separate because it's so big. Well, I think in the current environment, it's it, it'd be nice to have that yeah. know, separate since we have the ability to do we got other so much other stuff going on. And we don't to want to rob Peter to pay Paul. That's the yeah. big one for me. Yeah. And your accounting software should always make you aware of where the money is going. But I think yeah. having it separate so it's very easy to share clearly mm -hmm. right. fine if needed. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we're on to the appropriations budget. Can we want to get a motion on the floor and then do discussion? I'll make a motion to review the appropriations budget to add in the uh, account. The account order? Yeah. Should so are we waiting on the reconciliation yeah. vote then? Oh, I just took it as one. I oh, thought we okay. took it as one. Didn't we take reconciliation and pay the bills as one? I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so this is a motion to amend. Yeah. Right. That we're amending the appropriations budget. Correct. To yeah. add in. So we have a motion to amend. Supported. Mm -hmm. 
with an exception. Right? But let's get I a discussion. Know. I don't know how to do this. We, I guess we need the, discussion. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. get it on the floor. Because it is, we have to, it's in the packet as it is. So if you yes, want to yes. change it, we have to have discussion and oh. contingent on making that change and then approve. So go ahead and get the motion on the floor so we can discuss. Ooh, Which do we get to second in that? Right. So, Matt. Okay. So now Ooh. we can discuss, okay. make the change, and then do con a contingency. No issue about adding any of the money into our budget and paying whatever they need to do. But under each, and this is an oversight, under each one of these um, I'm going to say job descriptions, we have travel and stuff connected in there. Each one of these uh, job descriptions, we already have a separate spreadsheet for travel. And these, and I'll just say for district board, we voted and said, no travel. Here it says a hotel and food and drink, no alcohol shall be paid by district related travel. So, and it, that falls under every one of them. And I'd like to amend that out of there, but if the HR committee wants to review that later, we amend it out of this right now. What do you want amended out of? Just, Take it out, just of the, out of the narrative, or are you yeah. talking dollars and cents out of the actual budgeted numbers? According well, in to, here, it says that they can, you they can, can get all that and, paid for. Yeah. Pre-approved. So, it says pre-approved in every line item, though, doesn't it? Is, is it every line item? Say pre-approved? Okay. So all hotel and food and drink expenses shall be pre-approved prior to travel by board or executive director. Is that that's how it's worded in each one? So is that for one of them? That's one of them. It's like two of them. But it all requires pre approval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that's something you want to reword, maybe we could, we could ch make changes going into FY25 versus at this late in the year, making a sweeping change like that when it already requires pre approval potentially. It does say by the board or executive director. No, no, this one's the first one. Well, I guess I didn't look at all them. They at. either say board or board liaison or board or executive director. Or board liaison would be a board member, correct? Right. Yeah. Well, I count that as I guess I didn't being approved the by board. the board, which is right. us, not yeah. just yeah. one of us, right? theoretically. Mm -hmm. But if you did want to, you know, modify that going into the next budget year we could certainly talk about that i just wonder whether that's a a sticky thing we want to dump on natalie right now at this point in the year since we've already got a guardrail on there does it muck up the waters i didn't by it having up any money because we already got the travel already approved for each person i mean yeah it's all accounted for in this budget all the that's things just that was What were you going to say, Matt? Yes, right here it gives a, does it muddy the waters having, you know, the board or the executive director? I don't want to micromanage the executive director, but we have run into that in the past where the executive director is, is end around, and that got us in a few, some, maybe some, some waters that we didn't want to be in. Yeah. So... I'm just saying it's the wording of it. Not... With that, I mean, yes, it is pre-approved yeah. technically, but or by the executive director can wave that magic wand and, and make it happen. Yeah, I don't think that's which that's where we kind of have gotten caught in the past. Yeah, I don't disagree. It's it's worth looking at. This is pretty, you know, the Appropri Appropriations Act is pretty boilerplate. That's mm -hmm. how it's that's how everybody yeah. does it. That's how it's always been done. But mm -hmm. we want to look at rewording those or pulling that out or making you know we can change it how we want to yep. see see it done and then yeah. I think we well, would, have would, to approve it or you know have legal approve the changes that we make but removing all the, the travel pieces out of those job descriptions if that's what you wish to do I think we, we could do that and have that not be too murky next year are you if you're comfortable with looking at next year do you think I don't know. I just seen this, you know, 
And now we said it's been in there forever. Yeah, and plus I the just... boilerplate. I always been there. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean it should always be there. But... And next year is October. <laughs> yeah, October one. So not not far off. Far mm -hmm. enough that we could prepare for that, and finance committee could discuss it, and we could discuss it with the board mm -hmm. and and make that change. You know, it's actually a really decent timing for you to look at that right now if okay. we want to do that. I'm gonna Very try nice. really hard to get you a draft of the twenty five version for August. Mm -hmm. That's my personal goal. Yeah, I mean, I agree, Doug. It's worth like looking at if we want to put some additional. Um, We've already especially on the conservation district board, but I I agree. I think any major changes should just like there's there aren't any major things coming up really yeah, in the next couple of thought. months. Yeah. So it's not likely to even really you just let it go. Be an issue for this year. I don't think let it go, but definitely make it something that we want to discuss for next year. Incorporate yeah. into next year's or at least look at as we go to mm -hmm. develop next year's appropriations act, look at what are our mm -hmm. options to mm -hmm. start some things like that fall up. conference will be next fiscal year. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Would you like me to put it on the HR committee agenda to reword it? Or like what would you like to say? goes on the finance. The, I just say finance. finance. I mean, I guess it would be my okay. <laughs> I see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I sure am. No, I'd say I, I think that would be more finance than <laughs> Than really than HR. Well, yeah. think about it's a financial question about how... something the HR should have covered anyway. But... Well, and just some things to think yeah, about. Man. Like I think putting some additional some kind of limitation on is good because, like, especially the conservation district board, there isn't any mention of it being approved on that line item, and I think obviously it does need to be approved somewhere it's not like any one of us can just go travel and be like it's district related so therefore um but i think i think it can like wait but also some things to think about when you guys look at it is like do we want so that we don't catch natalie up do we want to put like a dollar amount like any you know for these other ones that are or executive director could it be or executive director if under a hundred dollars for example or under five hundred dollars, or whatever, like so that you could give Natalie still as much leeway as possible to make as many of those decisions, like on the day to day basis as necessary, um, while still keeping the board involved to address your. Concerns. She has that so. though, and each one of these, I'm going to say, except for the board, mm -hmm. has dollar amounts. Mm -hmm. It's got a travel expense on every one of them. Well, no, it just says all hotel food. And no, I'm saying, be... I mean, on our travel for our grants. Oh, it has right. a spreadsheet on that. Right. So, so I mean, in that case, I mean, this just popped up. Grant, I'm like, then... where did this all come from? Yeah, as like, long as it's within the grant. Then... Then... <laughs> but yeah, that district board one, I would say definitely <laughs> is the finance committee to come up with approved language for 25. And then we can discuss it at the board meeting. Let's refer to the finance. I guess what's on the floor right now. Sorry, the motion. That we're having, we get, we're discussing having a discussion. the motion to amend the appropriate the appropriate budget as is. Doug brought up his idea of potentially making a change. The discussion but is leading to, need to do that. Now. We're not going to yeah. do that. So the, the motion on the floor, sure. we can call the question after the discussion and we make sure Natalie's gonna, you know, we're gonna work on that together. Um I did have a couple of non- related to that comments yeah let's before about. we call the question so if we're good on that we're mm -hmm. i think i think that's yep. probably reasonable to to relook at that hopefully it won't be too big of a deal to re rearrange that a little bit so good it's a good deal um my comments were oh maybe my comments are gone okay <laughs> so we're good i just looked at what had been sent to me and i wanted to be able to clearly see what was being amended see where the revenue was coming in the new revenue we're adding in yeah. and originally it didn't have expenses set, tied to it so there's you know and they're in there now you just make you know there's no reason to right 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 amend or add a line item in if you don't have a related right. expense and if you have a related expense is that revenue in there yeah and i also that think is, so i liked it. adding the previous version in there mm -hmm. i think that was i I mean, you just, I, I liked that as well. I think that's helpful. Yeah, because then we can, in those general. of us that don't look at it all the time and know yeah. it, like the back of our yeah. hands can 
see what's happening. No, I liked that a lot. Yeah, so I don't have any issue with it at all. I just wanted to be able to see things. No, I appreciate so you doing. bringing it up. So Thank you. Good. That's all I had. Further discussion on the proposed amendment to the FY24 appropriations budget. Good. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Bye. So just to clarify, we're voting to approve this with no changes, correct? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I hadn't yeah. said yes yet because I wanted to show you what I was saying. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes we did not make any. Didn't want to lose the most plot. Yeah. <laughs> Can you? So yeah. everyone says yes. Right. Yes. yes. Everyone totally says yes. Yeah. <laughs> Who made the motion? We'll slow tonight. Doug made the motion. I second it. Correct. By Doug, um, so it's the final. Seconded by you. Mm -hmm. Are people gone? Or is it, it was, uh, I turned it off because it was just Alex and he logged off. So. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't think okay. you guys need to be staring at yourselves on the screen. So is it being recorded then still? It is still being recorded. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where do you guys, where does, where's that live? Um, on our website, we have a yeah. document and board meetings page and we post all of our um, recordings of our board meetings along with mm. the agendas and minutes and things like that. There's loads of space and everything for that. You guys are busy. Yeah. I mean it's online. So it um and, and we store stuff on our Google Drive. Oh, yeah, so the chair over here. But, yeah. yeah. It was supposed to be a roll call vote for that Shish. last appropriation. Um, it's yes. a first one. Any of that because it's monetary. We're gonna do a roll call vote. <laughs> I'll call the roll. <laughs> Director Hale? Yes. Dr. Grotner. Yes. Director Hutchinson? Yes. Me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Paying the bills technically mm. should be too, shouldn't it? But the rules are always different. Like anything monetary, we do a roll call. But yeah, it's on Okay. Oh, well, happy it up? Yes. Did you sign the bottom? That's right. <laughs> Most important part. I forgot much different with the lefty. That answers some questions. <laughs> Sorry. All right. You didn't want to see it the way I would have scratched it off. <laughs> Well, Walter Jr. is there. Yes, thank you. Keep it up. Keep it up. All right, moving on. Operations. Plant sale update. Yeah, we did really good. Um, you'll see the profit and loss is the document after that appropriations budget. Um, and the bottom line is is how much we profited. Um, the income, and that is more than we made between our two sales last year. That's we're looking at the what was the next? Nine thousand, a little over nine thousand. And what do we attribute that we ridiculous growth to? Sold well last year. We sold out in thirty minutes. Oh, you have more stuff to sell. Bought, that always helps. We bought more this year and um, still sold. We sold most of it. Yeah, Good. we raised the prices a little bit. We sold over twenty five hundred plants, I believe. Um, Versus last year, maybe how much? Uh, well, I know it was. I know it was third around thirty five hundred between both sales last year, of like numbers of plants. Yes, thanks. Good. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Also, good. Morgan did an awesome she job. She crushed it. She, she crushed was so it. helpful. She did such a good job with advertising and all this stuff. She though. was so helpful. Told everyone. Yeah. You loved that. Did really well. She did okay today with the worms too. Oh, that's good. That's that's good. good. Yeah. yeah. It is nice. I'll just add that our plant sale has just like grown over the years. You know, Lexi did a great job with like getting a really good base and it every year it's just grown and grown. So yeah. Well, because I think a lot of people now like watch out for it and keep trying well, to do yeah. it. And then yeah. it just, you know, it's it we've gotten that point of momentum that it's like we've heard from other conservation districts too that they just get overwhelmed, especially in the spring. So it's getting popular all over. Which is true too. It is really good. Everybody's staying home, fixing up their houses now instead mm -hmm. of like okay. People are finally catching on to the native plants, you know, yeah, before so. you couldn't hardly you yeah. know, drag people to, you know, buy them and stick them in the ground. And yeah. thought you're crazy and nobody needs them. So this is good. Mm -hmm. so you know that. Yes. We were at this 
seminar today. Yeah. The wormy thing. Yeah, the wormy thing. And they literally you know, mowed around their milkweeds. And I took Peter Works for them with me today. And I could see him, you know, he's, I mean, they literally, they mowed around him. I mean, you could see it purposely that, you know, he's like, and he said something, but, and he's an old time farm kid about, you know, there's a weed. Yeah. And all I could envision him over there stomping on this guy. <laughs> and I'm like, going, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> We're with some really natural people today. <laughs> That's not a weed. You're with the worm poop crowd. Yeah, well, so, we so, but I kind of chuckled because, and I, like say, your comment about people are getting more attuned to what's, mm -hmm. you know, what's good, what's bad, what's a weed, what's a flower, you know. So, like I say, I, I laughed because it was just a perception of it. I go, oh, this kid's going to go over there and just stomp on that thing or do something, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just like going, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, that's and You're welcome. one of the other, I think it was the, the meat technician from Kent County. Oh, that's a hemp vein, dog vein. <laughs> he rattled off, you know, the species of it was. And I'm like, you know, and I'm like, yep. <laughs> yeah. And my kid looks at me. Like, Move on. Get past it. Anyway. <laughs> cool. That's great. Okay. Someone's going to become professional. Professional things are happening next. For yeah. Those. Yep. Um, so the staff um, has a lot to offer and um, would like to um, be able to provide abstracts to various conferences. Um, but with things like MACD, it's challenging uh, because we don't necessarily know um, who all can go at any given point until we kind of get there. And so I think this was something that the HR committee um, wanted to discuss. Yeah, I understand. It's so always just been a, you know, trying to find the balance, it seems like to me, based on what I'm seeing as a new board member. So it's a challenge to figure out how much to spend and who to spend it on to keep staff well educated, mm -hmm. uh, engaged, happy in their jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, and what's the right amount of money and how do you decide what that is? Um, you know, and granted, this isn't the county, but at the county, just for an example, in a lot of organizations, you have a professional development budget, and then the staff person, along with the executive director decides how and when they want to expend that. It's just, you know, it's like, how do we, how do we get there? So it's, there's not so much, you know, um, subjective case by case basis stuff when staff wants to go learn something new, you know, stay engaged, grow professionally, you know, going and speaking at events and providing education helps them grow professionally. And, mm -hmm. you know, if we don't have a budget or a dedicated way that they can do that, um, it's a challenge. So I'm just throwing that out there for something to talk about as a board. I and don't have a lot to propose at this moment because it does tie so tightly to budgetary things and mm -hmm. other challenges that we haven't addressed right. yet. What I think it's part of a whole puzzle that we're currently working on sorting out. I think I just want to maybe add that piece to the puzzle for discussion as we start we to work have any examples. Of because I know these guys or... travel around to other districts. Mm -hmm. Talk and but I don't know. I think, like you're talking going to a class somewhere. Well, I think what what might be beneficial, and this just popped into my head now, be, and I just fly off the cuff. But like if as we start to look at the budget and kind of shoring certain things up, like Matt's talking about get, getting out of this mm -hmm. cycle that we're in, mm -hmm. that, the wheel. that's clutch. We got we got to get off that wheel. <laughs> we need to do that. Um, that $2,000 account that's not going to have more money in it, but it's $2,000 and it should be growing all the time, like plant sale, right? Made bank. That's the only money the district has that it isn't tied to something else. You know, how do we build that fund balance? All that rational development is a part of that whole financial puzzle. So, assuming we can sort that whole financial puzzle out, what might be interesting and we can do this ahead of time is maybe we do a little microsoft forms a little survey thing distributed to staff to find out you know what kind of things are important you know how often you think you might want to travel how much it might you know just try to, to figure out we could bounce around some questions to, to try to identify what's most important 
how much it might cost, what, what would be appropriate for professional development budget, things like that, just to start to learn that, see if we could do something that's really more standard. Yeah. So that people don't have to guess. They can decide, I've got this much money, because that's how I do it at work. You know, I decide, I have this much money. Mm -hmm. If I want to go here, 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 I better make some choices because I can't afford to go all the places all the time. I can only afford to go to some of the places some of the time. But I have this bucket of money with which to decide that. And mm -hmm. some of our grants do have that. Mm -hmm. So some and, of our yeah, grants have, have, I have mm -hmm. like for meat and produce safety um, and for um, what our watershed programs, mm -hmm. we have a, tra a training and travel budget that I have a spreadsheet and that we keep track of how much we have in that grant for those things. But not all of our grants have that and I don't have that. Right, mm -hmm. so how do we keep also what the district is supporting equitable across yeah. all staff yeah. people? Yeah. You know, some is funded by a grant and some get funded by the district and the grant people don't get district money and is that okay? Just all these different questions. This is again, very early in the game, but just someone to throw out and you know, as we're looking at you know, figuring out a, oh, a stronger budget, mm -hmm. stronger financial picture, if we can think about how we start to baby step something like that in so that it, it isn't as a, line a source of strain. I think it's a source of strain for the board members and for the staff mm -hmm. that maybe we can solve. Okay. So. And in some cases, when it comes to speaking at events, there's there may be an opportunity for, you know, sometimes events provide speakers with discounted registration for the event or even with a stipend. So, you know, I would like, I think everything everybody's doing here is really impressive and needs to be shared as much as possible with other districts and with other related groups, because, you know, I think we have a, we have a lot to teach and a lot of ways we can help expand conservation delivery throughout the state by sharing what we're doing, what's working, how we're doing it um, with other people too. Yeah. I don't want to get into a deep discussion on it either without one of our board members. I think it's a, certainly mm -hmm. a full board topic and early, but I so we just want to throw it out there for people to start thinking on um, as we get a game. I would together. suggest that, I mean, I know in the past we have, you're going to start, we started applying for grants that paid up front versus paid, you know, in the rears type of thing. So maybe that's something if we're writing grants over the, you know, in between now and when we have this discussion, you know, yeah. if, if we can, if we can, grants. yeah, if, I mean, so the grants that we are writing currently and futurely. To, to be more, more, more um, futurely? Yeah. <laughs> Is that a word? That, yeah, that's a real word. I, thought, maybe that, I just made another one up. Um, yeah. Webster calls me every now and again and asks yeah. me. So <laughs> more intentional about writing that into the grant application. Yeah, to be able to I mean, I'm just saying yeah. with the wages so they can get more money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, you know, I, I, yeah, I just think that may be that'd be the low hanging fruit, the easy way to yeah. to go after it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And it's going to be you know all different pieces. That'll be a piece. Mm -hmm. Grants you already have our piece, and then at some point there's probably going to be district funding as part of that piece too. Mm -hmm. for, different things so anyway that was the only discussion thing that came up during hr committee i think so slash mm -hmm. finance and so it's probably both so it's a full board discussion for in the future so that's just discussion we don't need a vote on that but if everyone if anyone has more discussion on that does staff have anything they want to throw in on that at this early stage in the game i think it sounds like a nice idea to, uh, in my mind it seems like maybe it could be cool to have a like a small uh, section in the appropriations operations budget that's like professional development that is utilized towards maybe staff that maybe don't have a funding budget in grants mm -hmm. so that they can attend, you know, maybe conferences or trainings that would be beneficial to them, um, but that they just maybe don't have funding and grants for. Mm -hmm. So I think that having maybe a line item on top of other grants and then making sure that that's just being utilized for people who don't have money in grants already could be, I think, great. I know there's a number of training things I'd like to do that Maybe we're just like more expensive that didn't quite have money for it yet. But and I do, um, I wanted, uh, I do want to put in some abstracts for MACD, at least one or two, because I think it'd be really cool to actually talk about some of the water quality stuff we've been doing. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's on my yeah, list. Awesome. Yeah. So I don't know what the next steps are on that necessarily. <laughs> Me working on the budget over the next month probably will answer a lot of that. I think. At something because what you're saying, but there's probably other things too that Nan would like to do. 
So maybe we make a chunk of money that she can make decisions on. And I think these are all things we need to jot down and talk about. Because when you say that, I go, okay, now she's in the process of picking and choosing. Mm -hmm. who she should who be. goes and who mm -hmm. yeah she, she should. should be have a final okay. decision but it would be nice to have everybody have kind of i like i think the thing that appeals to me i'm not arguing with that but the thing that oh, appeals to me is favorite. like all of our staff <laughs> all of our staff here's here's your professional development budget that's it you decide how to spend it and obviously with their leaderships you know i prove everything through paul but it's just nice to know all right i got this much and right. i'm gonna make choices yeah. Rather than not knowing, you know, but these are all things we can hammer out. I, I think maybe it starts in finance as we start to move in the direction we want to move. And then I don't know if it's going to be, it's not going to be a FY25 thing. No, I doubt it. You know, it, it'll probably be an FY26 thing. Maybe we can work out, work on through. How do you, I'm just telling so how do you decide on who goes if you got a budget out there? What if some of the, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, like this, the, the people that are out in the field spraying weeds want to go somewhere. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's like so. There, mm -hmm. it has to go kind of on. But they're not going to class or employee. Year. Yeah, you're investing into someone that's mm -hmm. not going to be here. And so maybe it's limited to only certain classes of employees that mm -hmm. have that <laughs> budget, and if it's not included in there, so yeah. and those can be things that can be written right into the personnel policy. You mm -hmm. know, if you're this type of employee, so sorry. Just like it's all the rest of the benefits, we only have. Yeah. Two district employees, I don't, I don't want to say this, I don't know how to say this, but Natalie and Annalise are the only ones paid right from the district. Yeah. Everybody else is kind of like subcontractors to the district. Um, I mean, technically, you, I, no. <laughs> well, I mean, they're all run by grants. All right, what happens when the grant runs out? I think it's a great idea, but yeah. like everything else, the money's not there. Right. So until the money gets there, Right. This is a great right. idea. It's a great, it's a yeah. great thought. It's a great mm -hmm. opportunity for people, but darn it, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, it definitely comes in behind. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's just so many other, other things that issues. have to get in yeah. play. Yeah, um, I know, agree. A, you know, until we get you know fat and sassy with cash again, you know, it, it's you know, again, I mean, you know, this, yeah, it's hard to you know, it's yeah. hard to come up with you know, that's why you know even going to the conferences and even just that, I'm going to say a little bit of money, you know, until we get right sided up and, and shored up fairly decent. Yeah. yeah. So we were supposed to put $20,000 in that separate bank account. I mean, if I'm wrong, $20,000 when it wasn't there. Yeah. So we actually, after months and months of saying we were going to put something mm -hmm. in there, we finally put $2,000. Yeah. We have made a whole six cents. Six cents, right? No, I mean, that, that is the thing. Like, we got to get a bit like, I wasn't going to bring that up because I was like, I'm just I'll bring it up next month because we've already made the financial votes. But like, there's no reason that we should not be getting a better interest rate in, in this oh. environment with yeah. interest. Like, and we're then, getting anything less than three percent. So, at the end of this, for of the next year, we we're supposed to dump some good cash in there. We want to have it so these guys at least have two pay periods. Yep. Because right now, and actually it was July, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. It was July. We were supposed to be almost 50 oh, grand. Sorry in about that. <laughs> where she couldn't pay anybody, but she luckily somebody paid in advance. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this came around, so the cushion got there. Mm -hmm. But that money that got paid in advance ain't going to be there later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I get all that, and I get yeah. that we're prioritizing all that, just throwing that out for something to think about. We're just start to trying to so give her yeah. as much leeway as she can because she's taken on a lot. Yep. And I don't want to bug her about money. I mean, she's doing a great job. Yep. It's just what she's got to work with. Yep. And Becky, you were there. Yep, sure was. <laughs> I think I was figuring back. No, on. good idea. Like I say, just yeah, just something to think about as we mm -hmm. put the whole puzzle yeah. together. Right. You know, just just be thinking about how to how to work that in. Maybe we can simultaneously be thinking about how is that going to be structured? Because we can work on that piece and then if we can get things sorted out and fund it, great. Then we know. So thank you for that discussion on that. I don't think we need to.
go any farther on that at this point. So I also agree that we're going to talk about it in the future. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right. Next item is policy. This one actually is a vote for the funeral leave policy. Um, you want to get a motion on the floor and decide. We make a motion to accept the funeral leave policy update. Support. What if we want to review it? We're well, going to discuss it right now. Okay. <laughs> it was in your packet too. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. 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 No, we'll discuss. That's just kind of how you do. You get a motion on the floor, and then discuss. Can't argue. Yeah. So now we can discuss. Doug, you have something you want to talk about? <laughs> but I'd like to know how. Yeah, I do, and I'm not against it. So, mm -hmm. um, how you came up with that? Because it's pretty bad if somebody loses. I'm gonna say two. It says two per year. <laughs> it's pretty bad if somebody loses somebody two per year. We went back and forth on this for quite some time in the HR, and that's why we added things. You know, additional maybe granted at the discretion of the executive director because. You know, one of, just trying to balance, like, we want every employee, let's say, you know, a strike team person, there are somebody close to them dies. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be like, well, sorry, you sucks to be you, like, can't do anything about that. We felt like, you know, at least being able to go attend a funeral and, you know, was a bare minimum. And we talked a lot about, like, what should be included as, you know, a important enough um relationship because like in the current policy it says immediate family we talked about that and said you know there are some people who you know they might have a partner that's not they're not married or it's not a technically a relation that's going to be a bigger impact on them than if some aunt who is an immediate family member technically that is that doesn't really impact them because they only saw them once a year at christmas so some things we left intentionally um broad to you know just recognize the fact that families relationships all look really different and we want to you know give employees the time they need we had a lengthy discussion about you know the fact if it's somebody very close like a spouse two days isn't really going to do a whole lot of good but they're like we can't really accommodate for all of that in a policy right like they're going to have to take additional vacation time or there's going to have to be additional accommodations made on a case-by-case -case basis so we tried to find a good balance of something that was like equitable to all employees provided like a benefit so that nobody is going to have to be forced to show up to work when they are like immediately in a bereavement period have an opportunity to attend a funeral um give some leeway to executive discretion and obviously those employees that also have PTO and also have additional vacation benefits will also still have those to use as per the rest of the rest of the guidelines but we didn't want to create a situation where somebody can't go to a funeral because they got to work do how many employees do we have that don't have PTO four and who what what employee is a strike team PTO, is it strike team well and we also didn't want to create a situation where even employees who have pto maybe they already took their vacation this year because they weren't planning on somebody dying now they can't go to the funeral because they used up all their pto so that was why it was to all employees it's like regardless of if you have any to begin with if you have any left like we're not going to penalize you and say well sorry you took that vacation three months ago you should have planned better that your sister was going to get in a car crash like you, like you can't. <laughs> I mean, Thanks, uh, you're welcome. I'm in a dark place today. Okay. <laughs> so we we tried to strike a balance. It, obviously, there's not going to be anything that is perfect or covers every possible situation, but we wanted to partly just communicate to our employees that you are valuable, you matter, you matter more than just as a cog in the wheel. We recognize your people with lives and relationships that matter to you. Um, and we want to make space for that. So. I think we open ourselves up to, I mean, I guess I'm going to say a larger can of worms. Same thing. I got no problem with, you know, leaving for funerals and things like that. I mean, but PTO is personal time off that we're all big kids. I mean, 
I don't know anybody who's been at a job for more than a year that don't have a ton of PTO time. I'm theoretically just sitting there. I mean, normally they do. Normally these companies are so overrun with, you know, PTO time when this person leaves them, you know, that they got to up that time or whatever it is, it's a huge thing for them. Um, and leaving it open to non-family or whatever. Again, I mean, I could look up the name in the obituary tomorrow and say, oh my God, I was best friends with Susie here. And, you know, I, I, I got to go. Her, well, her funeral is the day before the 4th of July. I'm, you know, I'm out of here. <laughs> so, so like I say, I mean, I, I think the reason we have policies are to put things in black and white and take the gray out of, and the emotion out of, you know, this is how we're going to work you know, your mother dying, your sister dying, you know, your friend dying. Um, so, I mean, again, I mean, we, we've, we've given them PTO time. We've given them sick time. Um, I can see giving them, you know, if we want a policy to, to cover all, um, I'm sorry for your loss, but I'm running a business here. You know, why do I got to pay? You know, if, if it's important enough for you to go, Maybe we give them time, you know, and you go without pay. Um, you know, we, we'll give you the time off. It I ain't like you've got to miss it. Can't, just some people just can't do that. And I think like, but that was why we limited it to annually. Now, obviously, it, like that still is going to come into effect. If somebody just has a string of bad luck, then yes. they. But like to have at least like something available, um, two days is not a lot. Like could somebody misuse that yes i'm guessing anybody who's gonna pull a name out of the, the obituary there's going to be other issues with that employee period mm -hmm. um and like at the worst case scenario they're going to get two pay two days of leave like that's not a big no two, two days two annually. times no it's no annually. it's two days annually. Annually. I'm right, right there two it. days of two times things no Wait it's just two days so, like, worst case scenario, they're going to get paid for two days that they should have been at work because they lied. Like, we can't, like, the, the chances of that happening are pretty low, especially considering the fact a lot of people will never need to use this benefit, hopefully. So, I think the risk to us from an organizational standpoint, from, like, a cost standpoint, is pretty low. The gain to, like, having this as an additional policy that just communicates to employees and future employees that we value our team and that we're that we care about them um like just being able to have this as a benefit that we're demonstrating the type of workplace culture that we have i think far outweighs the potential that somebody could get two three days off in the year doug any thoughts okay i kind of look at this a little bit like sick week if they don't use it they're gonna i mean people i'm gonna take my two sick days because i used them up this year thing i mean really so here's what we do at work and you can take it for whatever you want and i totally agree with you guys thinking that we need something for the parents so we have immediate family members we get three days up that's mother father brother sister thing um you can add the partner thing in there um, but, um, anybody else, aunts and uncles, you don't get it, but we, as a company want to support our employees. So we do give them like the day of the funeral off because you can do visitation, but it depends on the person and that would be up to Natalie on doing it. So I, I do agree. We need some time off. I don't like it like per year. You would like to see it per event? An event, yeah. Hopefully someone doesn't die in these guys' families. And if it's an immediate family member, it's a devastating thing that happens. Mm -hmm. And I want them to have all their time off. And also, too, is a lot of people here, their families are not from here. So yeah. if somebody's got to travel out of state, they're going to be taking a week off. Well, that's why we so, said two instead of one, because it's like well, if you have to travel. I just like to me, if it was immediate, and like you said, it's built into the grants on most. It, so, it's something that would be accounted for I mean, in French, yeah. I'd like to do something more for the immediate family. 
Um, so do you have proposed modifications? I'm just talking. Ones there? I'm just talking. You guys are the HR committee. I didn't mm -hmm. agree that for everyone gets it, you know, two days a year. I think it should be like in it. I don't want to put it as a event. Per loss. Per loss. Okay. To, I mean, like I hear you and like, obviously I want people to be able to take time off for funeral. To me, that feels like more open to like. It's abuse. her discretion. If we put it in here the same way you got it, mm -hmm. except for annually, just say per loss, immediate family member. Mm -hmm. And define what immediate family because that's the other thing, it doesn't really well, you can, like I defined it. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like the family, and maybe their aunt true. raised them and they love you can them still take the day off. Them the <laughs> Any, <laughs> I mean, I just know for myself, I have many friends that I would need a day far more than many of my family. Immediate family. I mean, that you, you want to do, you don't care about the money, you just don't right. do it. Well, right, but I'm just like, it's, it's, there's no use to the organization if somebody is like in that state of grieving to have them show up to work. There's right. no value. They're not, they're going to be there, but they're not going to be doing their work. They're not going to be mentally there. Do you want to table this? And do you guys want to come back with some proposed changes and then we'll revisit? Or do you want us to review it based on? The conversation and rewrite it you guys can redo it again but i mean that's my thought i don't like the annual thing for everybody but i like the per loss mm -hmm. for everybody and you'd like it to be more days but limited to immediate i family. said that's what we get my work i don't know what's a county gift <laughs> you're the <laughs> hr committee and you came up with this and you don't know <laughs> I didn't know my own policy for my own work to be able to look at this and figure it out. No one's died yet. Nothing, I guess not, nothing to compare it to. Huh? When someone dies, I will be coming and telling you exactly what it is. And that is, I feel like crap. Maybe so back you can check out what the county does. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'm just asking. I mean, I guess there's no I think I've, MACD that, thing. No, I mean, that. MACD is like too small of an organization, really, but. I think your your for event thing is is gonna knock it wider open than this, you know. And again, you know, I hope no one has most said immediate months. family. And further on the per event thing, an additional three days of unpaid leave may be granted at the discretion of the executive director. So if right. heaven forbid someone right. has two people close to them kicked in the same year. Right. Right. Like I said, well, I gotta believe also, she's gonna give them like, a day off, but but then again, it comes back to with pay or without pay, and I mean, I had a funeral a week ago, right. a very close, close family member. Mm -hmm. I was going to a hell or high water. Yeah. But my wife didn't, you know, grow up with this lady. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. she couldn't, you know, we, you know, she didn't go. Right. You know, she would have went, you know, probably if it, you know, been her, you know, lady who, you know, she grew up with, right. you know, she probably would have took her day. Right. You know, we had to make that decision. Right. You know, what was it worth? You know, right. and... Like I say, I you know, I, I think I think we come down to why is it always the man? Why why is it always the, the company that's gotta take it? You know, if if you want to take a day off, I, you know, I think you could come in and out of his office and get a day off, you know, if you threw a good enough case at her. But you know, it's gonna be without pay. Make up your mind. You know, is it worth, you know, what? You gotta be paid, you know, to go to your sister's funeral? I mean, you 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 wouldn't go if you weren't getting paid. I mean, to you me, know, that's this is like some people. This organization makes seventeen fifty, and exactly. can't afford to miss a day of work. And I understand that, and, right. and I'm you know, and I ain't saying you know you do or don't, but I'm. But again, at the end of the day, well, because to me, this is like a a culture issue as far as what type of environment do we want to create for employees, right? And if we create an employee that we're only going to give you, if we create an environment where we're going to give you the minimum we have to. Then they're going to have that expectation. Well, we're going to give you the minimum we have to. And I think when you build a workplace environment that we look out for you, you are looking out for the organization. We're all willing to go a little above and beyond when necessary for the good of all. That that's a good corporate culture to develop because it's not only good for the employees, but it's ultimately good for the organization as well. It is. But we're 
I'm going to say this. I 100% agree with what you're saying. But we're restricted in the grants where we're making so much money. We don't have other incomes to go to our money. Well, it's not like it's not like we're <clears throat> making an additional expenditure. Like those people, if they were at work, the only difference is we've lost the productivity of them for that day or two days. I agree. Um, like we're still able to bill the grant the same amount. That's fine. We can still get it covered under fringe. It's not like it, this is money that we are personally having to take out of our savings account to cover a funeral. I don't mind doing that for somebody for their immediate family. I'm a little different than that on that one. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I just, it's my, my account. But if it's immediate family, mm -hmm. and that's where, like, if it's a close family member or, or a close friend, her now we can work something out really i mean it's her thing she knows the people i mean she can say i'll pay you here because i know you but you're going to help me out here later on i mean that's her thing work that out with somebody she's here every day doing that do you want to rewrite it or is this good the vote i think the... it should be really good or just what table it I think we can table it, but what we'd like is for, for you to send us proposed firm changes that you see that you, if you guys want changes to what's here, I'd mm -hmm. like to see those on paper and then we can maybe appropriate those and revisit it. I'm not opposed to tabling it. We have a funeral leave policy. It's there. It's not an emergency. We don't need to spend probably any more of the evening leading that up. I don't think, but. Can you um, see what the county's got though? I mean, I gave you what we got and we're private, but I don't know what a public one has. You don't have to do it right now. Talk to Mr. Smith. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's very it's easy. Just I just don't happen to know what it is because thank goodness so I'm not to be and I'm really bad at knowing the fact that I'm very fortunate. You know, That's why there's five of us on this board. Mm -hmm. What? Five of us. Five of us on this board. And just because my opinion says one thing doesn't mean that's the way it's going to go. If that was the deal, we wouldn't need the rest of you four. <laughs> right? Yep. <laughs> So, I don't know. Are we tabling? Or am I, what's happening? Table, are we tabling? If you don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind tabling. You don't have anything going on right now. And if she does, she can make her own decision. We can add it to the HR committee meeting to revisit. Okay. With her input. And I'll look up yeah. the policy. How about this? How about I look up our policy and I'll send it to you for fodder. And then you reply to that sure. mm -hmm. with your thoughts. That'll yeah. be a good way to do it. Yeah. Here's the old, here's the proposed, here's what yeah. the county yeah, is. Like, you know, like, strip like and our meeting is the do, you know, Matt doesn't care. Am I remembering what it is? <laughs> so if we can get feedback before our next HR committee meeting on the 22nd, that would be enough. Okay. Um, I don't know how to table a motion for going to rounds. Yeah, I was going to ask. Anybody got do something we, on that? Uh, I, yeah, I don't know either. Well, I think do we, we just have all have to just vote now. Oh, no. Are we going to yeah. vote it down? But you can table a motion. Yeah, you can. You can table, yeah, but the thing is, if, it on the if we come back next month, it's not going to be because right now it's like to approve this okay. this yeah. as written. Right, right. I'm it's going to be a question. different. Right. Okay. Yeah. Call the question. All in favor of the proposed funeral leave change, signify by saying aye. All opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 Okay. Motion fails. But we still need a motion to table or to to work well, we can table. Just, like, table right? yeah. 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 just bring it back. Yeah. 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 May I say something? Sure. I <laughs> now that we're done. <laughs> yeah, now that you're done, I should have said it before. I'm sorry. So that's on me. Um, I do actually have a staff member that is gonna run out of PTO and has to go to a funeral. And that's why this came up to begin okay. with. No, it's okay that you voted no, but that's I just fine. would like to know if it's okay if I allow for unpaid time. If you sure. need to take it. Yeah, that's it's, just, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what your, I wanted. That's you know? your call. Yeah. You don't no, have that's to that. you're totally within your I mean, you do not have to ask us on that. I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. That's fine. Yeah. No, I I again, I mean, that's kind of my mm -hmm. mentality of this is come to Natalie. You know, she's knows the vibe and the feel, you know, and yeah. And you yeah. know the grain. There's personally I if there's a way you can paint them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
That's not here's mine. <laughs> I was going to say that just muddied things. Yeah, up that's not as... helpful at all, and I don't. That makes that's... me very uncomfortable. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But um, I appreciate that, and I will make the best decision. Do you need to walk a motion on to help support you and what you need to do with this employee? Do you have something? No. You can walk a motion on. No, that's fine if we want to edit it. I just we don't have anything not about policy for this individual. Do you want to see it... some sort of? Well, we just don't. Support? No, I don't think so. We okay. just don't have any unpaid. Unpaid time is not talked about in our policy as something you're allowed to do or something you're not allowed to do. And so I just wanted to make sure that if I made that decision, it was not going to be. In if you're getting your work, if, okay, if you're that's getting the job done and mm -hmm. some, I mean, I got no problem with time off without pay. I mean, if you're, if the work's getting done, they right. right. I mean, that's, that's your at problem. the end of the day, you know, if the work's getting done or not. You have an unexcused absence policy of some sort, don't we? Something like that though. To, yeah, really? I think it's. Yeah, but you got it. Oh. Well, another age. Well, I was hoping to get well, guess, to that when we got you know, to the leave. My, my, my point is, is that if you approve them to not be here at work and they're That's not okay. getting paid, yes. you know, we don't have to have that in the affirmative in the policy. Okay. You can just do Thank that. You. If it were to mm -hmm. become a thing, then an unexcused absence type of policy would kick yeah. in where mm -hmm. someone tried to start abusing it. Like, I don't care if I don't get paid. I don't want to work you today. You know, you yeah, never don't do that. Then you again, if you got a two weeks weeks policy sure. for taking time off. I you got to let us know two weeks ahead of time. I wanted to make sure that, um, yeah. that. I mean, if she you. did it with no pay, then, it would, then it would be an unexcused absence. No, it's excused. No, if, if she if, said it's okay. If I'm saying if she, if this employee, you just said this employee don't want to come in worky worky today. Well, she probably ain't going to agree to right, that. That's what I'm saying. Open. Yes. You know, and right. and therefore it would be an unexcused absence, right. which would that's go my point. towards the yes, you know, exactly checking your box. That's what I was. I'm all right. All right. We're tracking. Yes. All right. All right. Yeah. Phew. That's my all I just word. wanted. No, it was okay. Jeepers, Jenny. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I like was <laughs> uh, I just said I liked that. Jeepers, Jenny. Oh, yeah. I, I, I say Jeepers show. a lot, so said something. I was trying not to laugh. It was very serious. Well, it's always very serious here. Said, yeah. okay. We're kind of about this discussion things, right? Was that our last votable item? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, written it. I mean, I it's not that anybody's yeah, paying attention at the moment, but we are on break. Right? If anybody were to pay attention, we are not paying attention. I'm paying attention. I wasn't. I'm one hundred percent with you. That was paying attention. The leadership of this organization is not currently paying so attention. Sorry. Either one of them. <laughs> I'm sorry. What do you mean, either one of them? We There's only one leadership here. You're the chair and she's the executive director. And You're I'm the chair not right now. Off. You run the show here. You're well, she tried serious. to bring everybody back. <laughs> okay. You did very well, didn't you? Grant. Yeah. We are Away we go. not currently preparing any right now. Um, the SISMA has received all of them uh, that they applied for, actually. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so we don't have any pending for the SISMA. We have some pending for Watershed, if one of you would like to discuss them. Um, but these have also been on here for the last like four months. So mm -hmm. that's Appreciate to your discretion. I will just give a quick update though. Uh, things are looking really good for the Eagle 319 for Sand and Crockery. We've kind of been tentatively given the green light that we're probably gonna get that 600K. Uh, we also, again, nothing confirmed, but we're likely going to get at least partial funding for the 99K for shoreline uh, restoration type work too. So both of them, like, they're not ready to announce, but things are looking good. We should get those. So, uh, we actually, one one update though, the, the one on the top for the Watershed Council grant, that was to do some monitoring uh, and essentially do all the like prep work for the development of a watershed slash lake management plan for Little Black Lake. That was 35 grand through Eagle. And the thing is though, we got this county money and in that county money, in that budget was money to do monitoring and a lot of the things that this Eagle Watershed Council grant had on it. So we actually had some brief, brief discussion today. I personally, this is just my opinion, but I think we should now that we have the money through another avenue to do all this stuff i think we should send an email to eagle saying we're bowing out of contention for that we we literally do not need the money anymore um we would essentially just be doubling it up if we did get that grant so i don't know that that was just my opinion i thought that was the proper thing to do give another um you know organization a chance to get it so there's no way we could shift our 
our <laughs> county money? If I mean, we're going to award this, is there something better we can do with the county money? I, yeah, that's Camp a conversation to have. I mean, double down on this put... and get better results out of Black Well, I mean, yeah. that and I'd say stay we're going to do two. Bow out. I would too. We're going to have two, two, theoretically, two different entities mm -hmm. doing the same thing at the same time. So that's a well, misuse of. of well, but what you mean, we we wouldn't as an organization literally double dip. Like it, like Becky is saying, if yep. we got this money from Eagle, we wouldn't do anything unethical. We would just have to find roughly thirty five thousand dollars out of the county money and shift it somewhere else. And I'm okay with that. But what I'm saying is, though, you said you know if we call Eagle and yeah. say you know we've we're going to bow out, and they give it to somebody else and. You're still going to do it through county money, and they're going to do it with this money for a different water oh, project. Different, yeah, we would. Yeah. They would have their own separate projects that they're. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought we were be, both oh, going yeah. after this black yeah. lake. No, no, okay, that was just our proposal. That they would say, well, that's kind of a. Why do? Yeah. Two studies. Yeah. To get one. Yeah. No. yeah, I think that makes sense. Though. I mean, no, I I would say with Becky. I mean, you know, if we got. I mean, yeah, there's other opportunities we could spend it towards. It's true. I'd like to see it hang in there and see if we get it. See if we get it. I'd leave that to your discretion. Um, what you can ethically do within your monitoring program. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And and I mean, we've kind of discussed this before, and Natalie, mm -hmm. we we've discussed it too. Like the money with the county is a contract, right? And so if we decide, you know, hey, if we get the Siegel grant. All of a sudden, that frees up thirty-five k from the Ottawa County money. We can shift that into other things, buy additional equipment, whatever. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I would just definitely include maybe some more deliverables in a different yeah. area and communicate that with the county, yeah. just yeah. to be fully transparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe modification or something. But yeah, cool. I don't know where the place is to ask this question, but yeah. this stuff through the county and making this baseline and our big grant that we've been working on for so long and got who owns that information where is that information going to end up who has who is the per oh, the data the data the itself. data and where is the numbers going to go and what are they going to be used for it's it's going to be first of all we're talking about creating a basically an online database where the public can access that but um with that being said we want to have the data to be digestible uh, and, and we we want to avoid, I, I know the question you're kind of getting at is, are people going to be able to point fingers, especially at yeah. farmers? Um, it, we've talked about some ways around that, right? So I, it, it, one example, just to give you a really brief example, like right now, if you look at the E. coli data that we gather from our current grants, you can literally point to, this is our monitoring point, this is what the E. coli results were. Uh, we've talked about expanding that a little bit where instead of clicking on a point um, and saying, this is where it was monitored and this is the results. Maybe we could expand that and do a, hey, this is you know the results for this entire tributary, the average results, whatever. So somebody could look at a huge stream section and say, in this stream section, E. coli was high, but they can't look at a specific point and say, just downstream from you know Matt Hale's farm, E. coli levels were super high. So we're, we're already having conversations about how we wanna have that data accessible. Right by the public because we we want to avoid that as well right and the, well and that's been i've gotten several phone calls since you went to our bureau you know <laughs> that will some people up mm -hmm. to um to that very question and right now deq has just been pounding anybody who's who's literally discharging more than 300 gallons of water a month 300 gallons of water in a month and they're they're going after that person and and above so right now, I don't know what the heck got up DEQ's derriere to to why they're just making such a push on every industry across the board, mm -hmm. small, medium, large. It's crazy. The the amount of activity, the amount of negative activity that's going on right mm -hmm. there. So there's a lot of people who are just trying to keep their head down and and you know you mm -hmm. know they're doing let's say 300 gallons. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm to put in a twenty thousand dollar drain field to take care of three hundred gallons of water, yeah, it's a lot. In the contract with the county, the data belongs to the district. So while we can provide it publicly, and we probably should in a summarized way, um, 
we're non-regulatory and we house a lot of confidential information similar to that. Um, so I would think that the district housing that information would maybe put some people at ease since we are non-regulatory and we I just don't want to see that almost I understand what you're saying, but yeah. that almost excites me. That almost concerns me higher because if it's ours and if it's you know the districts and something ever was to become of that study and it's like wow you know the district you know that's the districts and you know they they let it out or, or it got out or they, you know if they wouldn't have done that somebody blaming the district for something sure. negative that I happened so that's well so that's my only thing here is what's what the saying. fallout yeah. of what you know I think there's great things that are going to come from this but you know so and so the one thing i always try to say though is like one thing to note like we we're doing this because there is a lack of data in most of these watersheds but there's not a complete lack of data eagle does do monitoring uh on kind of a cyclical basis they'll go out to most of these watersheds and they will do it so this is not like unknown completely unknown stuff if eagle wants to go just downstream from your farm tomorrow and take an e coli sample they can and they will Right. They can also literally anytime they want to, they can hop on Ottawa County GIS and they can look through aerial images of the last few years and they can say, hey, this guy uh, filled in a wetland last year. Right. So we're not collecting totally unknown and unknowable things. We're just getting uh, this baseline data, like you said, and we're also building this framework to apply for grants for voluntary stuff down the road. So, you know, another thing to know, too, is like, the, the non-point source pollution program with the state has been around for decades, right? And they've collected this data. They've they've made grants available to organizations like ours for decades and decades. I personally have been here for almost a decade. We have never been part of any sort of regulatory action. I've, I've collected a whole lot of data, and it's never, ever, ever been used for anything regulatory. So I, I know that, you know, everybody can always make that slippery slope yep. argument and say, well, they could though, but it's never happened. So, no, I say, and you know, and that's, I think what you're going to be doing over the next three to five years is going to gain a whole bunch of attention yeah. from everybody yeah. good and everybody bad, you know, in the whole spectrum of things. So, again, it was just, it was just something I didn't want bad publicity coming back at the district and someone, you know, start trashing us because mm -hmm. they had a bad day. Yeah, and no, and at a point, though, have yep. their eyes wide open. They have some sort of a data management, mm -hmm. you know, statement or, you know, to yep. be, be very ready, very specific, you know, so it's immediate. You can address that. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, I, think I mean, this good. thing's huge enough. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. thing's huge enough. You know, it's it's going to gain the attention of some, you know, want to be, you know, I'm making a name for myself. You know, I'm going to, you know. Here I can go get this low hanging fruit, you know, information, and if someone's yeah. already did the work. You know, I'll just run up behind them and grab their stuff. So it's gonna be like a data protection statement or something that's available, like yeah. wherever you post information about the project, or you know, a clickable yeah. link that says this is what we collect, this is what we do with it, this is what we don't do with it, or something, and yeah. maybe even have. You know, I think I think a statement it to make sure you're not because sometimes you make a statement it's an ambition that yeah. goes does the opposite sure. effect of what you want it to do but well and I think you know. a statement you know more precisely defining what non-point source data is I mean these you know people that view this data need to know that this is a snapshot in time mm -hmm. and if it rains you know a point in the watershed is collecting water from hundreds of acres around it, right? So even if there's a point downstream from a farm or a home, there is absolutely no way of, of looking at that data and, and pointing the finger at that one potential source, right? So I think people need to understand that too. Yeah, but making sure, yeah, make sure that they can or, yeah. you know, backing into that in a way that, you know, you don't have to do that type of a deep right. dive as hard and ego's probably got a lot of that in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a place to start on that. But yeah, I think you're, if you're right, it's going to be right now, it's just yeah. so dangerous. I mean, it's to be honest, it's I'm surprised it's crazy. Well, the county supported. I'm surprised they didn't they ask those questions. monitoring wells on yeah. my easements that don't even collect biological data. All it collects is pressure, temperature, depth, and they wouldn't let me include those in the easements that we're going to fund with the ARPA money. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? It was the yeah. two particular individuals who rely on certain particular things. And, it was anyway, like I said, that was my question. Like I said, I've been getting some yeah. 
some farmer feedback on that and they were like going cool oh, mm -hmm. i think that's a really good heads up so mm -hmm. yeah i do know um adam asked about um like getting like a timeline of like when we're going to be doing things and we've been kind of finalizing that so i told them that we could we'd be happy to share information on like where we're going to be sampling and all that yeah. and i kind of imagine it too like our pigeon watershed management plan that we completed a couple of years back you know through that we did a bunch of monitoring and identified like critical areas which was basically yeah. stream sections so it wasn't necessarily like points of like this was a specific point but you know i kind of we can kind of say I, I think this is like a the the section of stream or this data. like whole yeah, tributary anything, anything you share is going to be aggregated mm -hmm. i think sharing the timeline generally like oh you know quarter three of this year we're going to be in this watershed i think that's fine but i certainly don't think we should be sharing like oh on this day oh, no. we're going yeah. to that it's more general because we also don't want people to like change up their practices based on when they know we might be in the watershed and, and whatever that would make for no like say, and, and right now it's just i mean we had it we're just on the cup of getting meat you know yeah. i mean and there was a couple little <laughs> little things that you know I back up and said stop because yeah. she was asking questions that if that would have went any farther than me and her's conversation that day, it would have put my business in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. You know, and just that type of thing because it was like, you know, I've spent hundred thousand dollars on this meat thing the last seven years, and I was ready to throw the towel in. And seriously, I mean, and if if my meat certification is going to bring DEQ down on my business. It, it stops, you know, now, you know, we don't need a sign in the front yard for that aggravation that's going to come after us. So, and they, they have said that the DEQ has, has questioned some of these meat verified farms they are coming after, you know, them, you know, stopping in their yards a lot more than just, you know, somebody who isn't meat. So meat. I thought that was dirty pool with, what they've been trying to do with me, you know, the last six, eight months. And so anyway, like I say, that's okay. good to know. But again, just kind of watch, watch our backs on that. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's something that we're just kind of prepared to, yeah. Yep. So with all that being said, now you guys are worrying me, should we ask for legal advice from the county? Because they offered it to us. <laughs> Legal advice to what to well, do. Well, I'm saying something legal put together or talk to Joe Bush and say these are you you need to look at your contract and talk to Joe. And if you want legal okay. counsel, which I would highly advise, I would find some budget and secure outside counsel. Okay. That's why we're talking. <clears throat> because I like Matt said, they're gonna be coming from all corners. You don't want to get what you pay for. By coming to the county is legal call for right now through the county in as much of a shambles as the board of commission sure is. All right. yeah sure it is yeah but i i would i, I would agree that no i mean that's good to know i mean it's well not surprising but good to know with a bucket you know but maybe that's what some of that money that was yeah. in it to get a little outside i was gonna say how much of those wells gonna cost <laughs> right. exactly that could be where some of the money goes yeah. though you might want to do something you guys are the ones that can get hit up mm -hmm. We can just forward it all to the chairman. So. Yeah, good point. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Any more discussion on that? Yeah. Executing grants. Um, we are still in the middle of executing the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative grant. We don't have a, an agreement for that yet, but it is on your. It was on the appropriations budget, and like we're getting it. I just don't want to have to wait. Um, just in case, uh, as well as our LSR grant for HWA treatments, um, we're in the middle of executing that as well. I expect the water quality monitoring will be off of this um, next month, and um, your volunteers and the monitoring, our monitoring, and monitoring will too. come off as well because those are executed. That's fine. That's Executing means you haven't signed an, yep, signed an agreement yet. They yeah, started, we're like, and so we have received it. They have told us we're getting it, but we have not signed. And we're like in the middle. And all the real grants that are happening are out. Though they don't show up on this list. But yeah, those are all happening. Yeah. And just, so I guess the micro. That's good. Monitor. That's a good question. On. Okay, that's a good question. Any questions on executing grants or additional comments? 
We did have a PA 116 that came through, and typically I have a letter for you to sign for it's those that we reviewed it. You're chopping ahead. Oh, sorry. Well, I heard you say something. I did because I remembered about it. Yeah. I forgot. All right. Is sorry, Becky. This month? Can we do it next month? I mean, can we do it at a different date? Or do you can you print it now? I, no, I do, I, I'll i have to finish writing up that letter and I, I could email oh. it to you to sign. I could do, yeah, it just needs to be signed and sent to them. So I think we were doing them personally, weren't we? I mean, like not the electronic signature. It was a in yeah. pen in someone's hand. I mean, if I have to drive it out to you, I, yeah, I can do that. Okay. So, I mean, I'm coming. That's in. on me. I just, I yeah. forgot to get a prep for this. I did review what the PA. Is that? I guess I've not seen it. It was the office. right township. It was for uh, Batson, Batson Trust. Oh, because that should come across my desk also. 24th and Wilson. That's great. Mm -hmm. Got two emails. Well, yeah, in the mail, and I got a from, from Did Cheryl send it? I couldn't tell you. I'm sorry. Is that 24th and Wilson? It's 28th and Wilson. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's okay. So you guys will handle that now that we've jumped ahead. <laughs> we'll just take that off our list and then we'll go back to so two minute board updates. Yes. Okay. Hale, you're first. Oh. Hey. Um, no real updates. Like I say, we're getting close to being beat. Went to the wormy thing today. What do you want me to call? I just I, love, I am I getting close to being an agent upon the. Who should tell Karen to be the Yeah, hold on. I want to make sure I got this right. Went to wormy thing, and then fixing to get meat. Fixing to get meat. This is now in the official minutes. Morgan, those are some self-made ideas right there. You want to get meat? Awesome. All right. No, like I said, that's that's kind of the big deal. The worm thing was interesting today. The other one was was okay. It was composting. Um, we just started our composting thing here in the last 10, 15 days. So okay. we're, uh, yeah, we're we're sliding into this. So, I mean, but yeah, the other one, I had been to the other guy's farm. I, I worked with him. So I'm, I'm out there a lot. Mm -hmm. So his was more, I'm going to say mediocre, just because it wasn't new to me. I'm sure everybody else was just, was just odd. So, um, but yeah, it was... Um, interesting afternoon interesting i found like i said i found the most interest was the kid who works for me who's 18 his concept and take on it was 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 just something of a total different avenue one this is like one of the first seminar type things like that he's went to i mean very astute he was big in ffa so i mean he's been to a lot of things but you know just his 18 year old farm boy mentality of, of what the world should be. And, and we were with a group of very naturalist, very earthy, homopathic people and just way out of his world. But so, like I say, it, it was interesting with that. So, that's my two minutes. That's what I, that's all I've done for the last two months. <laughs> Great. Thank you. And Van Dyke is not here. So, his report's short. So, it was mine. This is also short. Tending to finance me. Right uh, what do I have to report relative to the visitors? I guess just that the um, it's super boring for everybody, but the Region 7 uh, summer meeting has been set for August 1, uh, which is amazing because I can't I can't be there. <laughs> so that's really cool. And, and the chair well, everybody needs up, to go. So, so means that we can vote Becky in his chair. Yeah. And that uh, Kurt, the guy, has not even signed up to save the date yet. So, so far, that's going amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, that was it. Where is it supposed to be? It's supposed to be in Clinton County. And I know the location, but I don't remember what it was. Oh. It was based on the location that chose. So, it's in Clinton. Those way to Clinton. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's state right. council, like yeah. to yeah, it's it's summer Eaton, conference. That's all I know. Ionia, Ottawa, Muskegon, Montcalm, Barry, Montcalm, Street through the sun. Yeah, oh, speaking of Montcalm, there's a um potato field day in uh, SJC that, and they're doing a lot of irrigation potatoes. things. So, yeah. okay, it's all there's Montcalm is potatoes and irrigation. Just throwing that out there, it's just a half day thing. <laughs> 
I don't have much time. Oh, um, I do have one more thing. What are we doing for summer picnic as a district? Anything? Are we just going? Oh, Farm Bureau for summer picnic? Engaging in any way? That, um, I think we just got, Morgan just shared that with us today, that the date. Um, in the past, we've gone, so when sometimes we've had a table, sometimes we've just gone to speak about some updates and things. Uh, I would, well, I did want to reach out to the to Adam and see if, I don't know if there was anything, usually like we could say a couple things or talk about culture. Usually we'll use it to, um, Advertise for Colton Resilience. Yeah, and and so we could. Pictures posted yeah, time, there we go. Yeah, so we're last time. So well, I would not be available for that. I if have you... that on my calendar, so I would like to go to that. I just haven't reached out to Adam yet. Um, or I'm not sure. Which, I think there's a RSVP, but I could reach out to them and say it would be, we would like to at least give an update of the changes to our Colton Resilience and how it's going to be moving to winter and follow up workshops and stuff. And if there's anything else from the district, we'd like to just. You know, I don't know if it'd be good to mention, talk about the monitoring piece and mm -hmm. how the, you know, our statement of how the data is. So I don't know if that would be worthwhile to talk about at that meeting. We won't meet before then, but yeah, we should certainly have a presence and maybe grab the mic a little bit if we can. Yeah. And I have I think last year project talked... that won't be able to champion mm -hmm. there. So I don't know, possibly a blurb or if we have to table or something. Okay. I just stay in touch with me on that. Yeah, I think last year we didn't table because the year before that the table didn't really like do a whole lot. We just it was no. better just to yeah, kind of go up and do it in the table, right? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, I have it on my calendar. I'd like to go. Do we know who the new canvas yet? I don't know what her name is. Matt, who's the new Mistel? I have not heard. Yeah, that. that was one thing. I usually I usually contact Mistel, so I uh, like a treasures contact. I have Adam's email. I've talked to him a few times though. Okay, that time. Okay, let's hear two minutes. <laughs> we have a budget for the state. Um, it's I mean, the same. That's, that's bet. I mean, it feels like it's the same, but doggone it, took a whole heck of a lot of work to get there. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the good the good news is there are some changes. Um, number one is that the three million dollars last year it was two million dollars in a one million one time fund, which was part of the problem because they wanted to just cut the one time because they were like it was a one time but we have that three million dollars from the general fund in the budget now which is a really big deal even though it doesn't feel like it's movement it is mm -hmm. um and we'll make it like give us an easier starting point for negotiations next year um they the biggest thing is that they're funding this quarter of a million dollar independent study on conservation mm -hmm. districts funding and operations and i think that will end up guiding in a very sizable way um what the legislature decides to do with conservation district funding in the future so my main goal from my macd standpoint is just to stay as engaged as possible um, i'm meeting with nrcs next week i'm working on getting a appointment set up with director boring um in the next few weeks so that we can you know just um, be in everybody's ear and make sure that conservation districts are being represented in those conversations and in that study and research. Um, there are a couple other minor changes as far as how money gets distributed. So like, for example, last year, the $40,000 that should have gone to Macomb just went back to the state because Macomb doesn't have a functioning, like doesn't have a district right now, period. Um, the board just kind of abdicated and like um, I hope to be able to revive Macomb but in the meantime so they made some like minor statutory changes to how that three million allocation is going to come about that um, according to um, our people at, at MDARD should functionally just mean that any districts that are not functional their amount gets divided between the rest of the districts there may be some other minor changes in how the allocation happens, but we just don't know until we get guidance on that. So we're I'm watching that really carefully to see if that's going to make any functional changes for us. Hopefully, all the only changes should just mean that we get an extra like thousand bucks or something. Um, so yeah, we we made it past the finish line on on that piece, and the the other big thing to know. That I haven't been hammering home in general because I, you know, until we have like a more clear picture of a plan is that always um, the current MEEP program sunsets in 25. 
has to be like reauthorized from scratch. So um like we're we're just gonna be right back, right back to the drawing board. Kind of frightened. But when we got what we wanted. And yeah, I didn't realize it. Some that's some funny. Yeah, you didn't read it. Just gonna yank the rug up. Right yeah, come out of that next. But um, but the good news is, as Karen mentioned in her update, you know we have brought a lot more visibility to meet, and um, and we've had an opportunity to educate um, both on the Senate and the and the House level. I think, like I said, the biggest factor is going to be what comes back from this study. Um, other than that, I think the, our ability to continue to perform MEEP at high level is going to matter and how and what happens with that going forward. But it also is just a good heads up for Ottawa and for every other district that like can't become entirely reliant of their functioning on a single program because there are some districts that losing MEEP would have just closed their doors. Um, that's not the case here at Ottawa, obviously, but there are districts that that was the case. And so it's just a good cautionary tale that like we're doing a great job here in our district as far as having diversified funding sources and a variety of programs. Um, but we just always need to kind of remember that that needs to continue. We never wanna become overly reliant on a single program. So that's Is that the my... end of the fiscal year, John five? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> yep. So everybody just keep doing amazing. I'm just gonna, you know, keep working my butt off and lancing and around the rest of the state and do what we can do. Is there any information on what that study is gonna look like yet? The like only the... thing that it's just an independent third party study. Mm -hmm. So they are hiring some kind of outside source. Mm -hmm. to do I you know from talking to Senator Cherry his goals are to kind of look at how other conservation districts are funded in other states and one thing I've learned through this position because I made a point to talk to my counterparts the executive directors of the other state associations and all the rest of the north central region for NACD um, and every state operates like so differently as far as how how districts are run, how they're funded, um, you know, in some states it's entirely run through the county. Every single district employee is a county employee, mm -hmm. um, and they have very marginal allocations that basically just fund a minimum a stipend for the board. And um, in some cases, the boards themselves are set up as kind of committees of the county you know, like the Ag Prez board is at the county. Um, some states um, only allow, like Missouri, four of their board members have to be agricultural producers. They only allow farmers on their board. And the fifth is an appointee from their um, version of MSU extension, the Missouri State Extension is their fifth board member. So there are a lot of different models throughout the country as far as how conservation districts are run. Um, there are some kind of unique things about Michigan. Um, you know, we're the only we're the only state that I've talked to that we that runs our own elections in the way that we do. Um, most other states, you uh, know, <laughs> most other states it's run along with all their other elections. It's through the county mm -hmm. clerk's office or however they do elections. Um, they definitely don't have elections happening all over the place all over the year, um, which is, you know, a real challenge in a whole lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I expect that that independent study is going to look at a lot of those things and analyze, you know, where are conservation districts delivering the most results and what are the practices that are common between those high performing areas and what. So, I mean, we could we could see a lot of recommendations for some pretty significant changes within the next couple of years. That's not going to happen this year. It's not going to probably happen next year, but you know, we just need to be aware that that's coming down the pipe and again, stay engaged in every way we possibly can. So MACD, stay engaged um, on the state level and with our partner organizations, but it just continues to be you know, even more important for directors 
to stay engaged in their districts and in their regions, which is why I would say anyone that can come to the region meeting, um, if you can make it as directors do, because you know we're going to live or die as conservation districts by our collective strength. And being a really strong district isn't going to matter if the majority of districts in the state are struggling. So us being able to be leaders, share information and knowledge when we can, and create a stronger system is going to, as a whole is going to be really critical. Awesome. Going forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, correspondence. There's some Jenny. Did I jump something? Did you? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. This is fun. Be a chair. Is it? <laughs> is that a favor? Adjourned. All right. All right. All right. So we're closed now. Right.